Are you ready to go on to multiple inheritance? Inheriting from more than one class. A lot of languages don't support that. They don't want any multiple inheritance because it is complicated. Or it can be complicated, but it also can be very useful. Let's take a look. Here's our unified modeling language diagram for our multiple inheritance example that we're about to see. We see that we have a guru class, a greeter class, and from the greeter class, the name greeter inherits. We're going to make a named greeter guru class that inherits first from the name greeter and then from the guru. And we'll make a guru name greeter class that inherits first from the guru and then from the name greeter. Okay, let's look at some code. Here in our guru class, we see we have some sayings, a buy and a pontificate method, and our greeter has a greet and a buy, and our name greeter has a magic initializer and a greet. Our guru name greeter class inherits first from guru and then from name greeter. The order matters. Here we just have a pass, meaning that we're not adding any functionality, only that our guru name greeter has the behaviors of guru and name greeter. And so does our name greeter guru. But which behavior has priority? The first one. So when we instantiate a guru named greeter, we look first in our guru named greeter class for a magic initializer. Not finding one, we go to our guru. Not finding one, we go to any super classes of the guru, of which there are none. And then we move over to the name greeter and we finally find our magic initializer and we put into Rocky's object his name. When we ask Rocky to greet, when he first goes into his instantiating class, guru named greeter, nothing there. So he goes into guru, and guru does not have a greet. Therefore, it goes back down and move over to the right to our named greeter. Then it has a greet. Well, this greet then calls the greeter greet, and then gives its name. When Rocky pontificates, he goes into his instantiating class, finding nothing. He goes immediately into the guru class to look for his pontificate, and there he finds it. When Rocky says bye, because he's a guru named greeter, he goes there first to look for the bye method and finding nothing in there at all, it goes into the guru class where we find an elaborate by that prints goodbye and remember. And then it calls self pontificate. Well, this is pontificate and it's going to print one of these sayings. Okay, that's the behavior of our guru named greeter. Now, Moose is a name greeter guru and he will greet, pontificate, and by as well. But being a named greeter guru, it goes there first, looking for a magic initializer, and there's nothing there at all. So it goes into the named greeter, and it finds the very same magic initializer as did Rocky, but he did not go through all that spaghetti action to find it. When Moose greets, it looks first in named greeter guru, and nothing there. So it goes into the named greeter and finds the greet which calls on up to the greeter's greet and then comes back where that was Colin Prince's name. Realize that the method resolution order quits whenever it finds a method. It looks no further. So if you wanted to go and call another method in another class, you need to say so explicitly like we're doing here. When Moose says pontificate, because he's a name greeter guru, he starts in that class. Seeing nothing, he goes into the named greeter class and works all the way up that hierarchy before he moves over to the guru class, where he immediately then finds the pontificate. 
Now then, when Moose says bye, we look in that name greeter guru and there's nothing. Therefore, we go into the name greeter and there's nothing. Therefore, we go into the greeter and there's bye and he says bye now. So although the interpreter did a lot of different action, depending on whether we're looking at a name greeter guru or a guru name greeter, the only thing that showed a difference was the by. What you want to remember is that you go left, right, depth first. You start on the class to the left, work your way all the way up that hierarchy, and then you give up and move over to the next class, left, right. We did depth first. That's what you remember so you know the method resolution order. Here we'll see a multiple inheritance example where we do add some functionality. We'll be looking at our welcomer class and we see that we are inheriting from our name greeter class way back here in lab 340. The greeter 5 death. That's our greeter death and our named greeter. And our salary employee comes from the same lab where we have our salaried employee. So our welcomers have the behaviors of both of these classes. We are making a class level attribute. You may think of it as a static if you come from C++ and other languages, but we think of it as a class level attribute where we keep track of the number of welcomers we have made. Whenever we make a welcomer, we're going to be given a name and a pay rate. And here we're adding one to our welcomers that is in our class. In passing our initialization onto the salaried employee, because that's the one that takes in the name and the pay rate. Our magic string is what you might expect. It is just passing back the name. I implemented two more pieces of magic because I think they're very interesting. One is the magic delete. Whenever a welcomer goes out of scope or is deleted explicitly, then we're going to take down the number of our welcomers by one and whoever is getting deleted is going to say, oh no, and then we have our magic call. Let me show you when the call happens. On line 37, I have a welcomer, Marsha, that makes that much money. This is a call. What it means is that an object of my class can have parens after it. If I do that, then what automatically happens is a magic call. From this, you'll see, she says, get to work yourself. Okay, let's take a look at our main. We're making Joe a welcomer, and I capitalized him. I have anxiety about whether a welcomer should be capitalized or not, because a style guide is that if the object is callable, it should be capitalized. But also, it's an object of a class, and that doesn't seem capitalizable. So we see Joe is capitalized, and Marsha is not capitalized, and I'd appreciate some guidance there. Okay, here's Joe. He We made him. He greets. He goes back to that greeter, deaf to greet. Now, Joe, we're going to calculate his pay, and that goes back to the salaried employee. We make Marsha. Here, we're doing our call. Get to work. She's all insulted, and she says, get to work yourself. So here we are calculating her pay. Then we're reporting the number of welcomers, showing that from anywhere we can get to that welcomer's attribute. Everything is wide open so far. Here, we're doing a call to Joe. We're passing in goodbye, and he says goodbye yourself. We're printing that we're deleting Joe so we can recognize this. There is a keyword in Python, Dell, and it will delete what you ask it to delete. Not really. What it deletes is that identifier. It does not delete the object that 
Joe is identifying unless that is the last identifier on that object. Well, for Joe it is, and we see in the output that he says, oh, no, after deleting Joe. And here is where we report the number of welcomers, and it's gone down one. We made a second identifier for Marsha, Linda. That identifier is on the same piece of memory as Marsha. When she greets, we'll see that her name is still Marsha. That was Linda saying she is Marsha. And then we do the delete. But Linda is still labeling Marsha, so she doesn't get deleted. Here she is greeting and saying she's Marcia, but when she goes out of that namespace, that's when it goes through the magic delete. So you can be sure objects will go through the magic delete when the object is really gone. The magic delete is equivalent to the destructor in another language, and the magic initializer is the equivalent of the constructor in another language. To know everything, you want to have an idea about method resolution that's a deeper idea with multiple inheritance. This UML diagram represents a diamond inheritance, where D inherits from B, which inherits from A, as well as D inherits from C, which inherits from A, so we're doubly inheriting from A. It was decided that you really don't want to go left, right, depth first when you're doing that. You want the closest one, so we really wish we'd get to C. So the truth is that there are C3 rules for deciding method resolution, and they're very complicated. A very good approximation is that you list all the classes visited left, right, depth, first order, and we cross out all duplicates except for the last one. And then this is a resolution order. Now, there's a very complicated case where it does not produce the right resolution for diamond inheritance. I'll let you read about that. Happily, all classes have a class level method, MRO, and that tells you the correct method resolution order, so you can always know for sure. Okay, you're on for an exercise. Don't take a lot of time. Just give it your best guess. That's all you have to do here. We just want to give it some thought. When you're done, we'll take a look at the solution, which is a surprise to many people who are very familiar with other object-oriented.